Way back in June 2023, I created a video showing how to make an e-commerce store using variables. It's time to update it. So much has changed since, so I'm here to show you how to do it now, and it's so much quicker. As usual, there is a link to a Figma file in the description if you want to follow along. Let's jump in. So what we're going to be making is we're going to be making a sort of page that you look at and see all the different shoes that you have on offer, and then you click on one of them and it will open the product page. This is a very classic sort of e-commerce experience. Potentially, if you want, let me know in the comments. We'll create another video later showing how you can add these to cart and the stock changes and all of that. So the setup here is I've got this component that's for the card um, and I've got just the cards here so we can make it once and use it multiple times. And then I also have this sort of setup and I've already created the variables for this. At this point, you don't need my help to know how to create a variable. You just click here and then click on plus. No big deal. Now we are going to be using modes for this video. And if you don't have the ability to use modes and prototype with modes, then you can't really achieve it this way. Let me know if you want me to create some more videos on how you can use all the features that are just on free mode to create this. So enough babble, let us begin. Let's talk about how these variables are set up. I've got a variable for the image, the price, the name, the color, and the number. This should actually be called ratings. So I have this kind of setup and it has four different modes, which means that anytime I select a shoe, it's going to know which shoe I selected, one, two, three, or four, and change everything to match that shoe's information. So let's start assigning these in our card. So in the card itself, I have space for an image. We'll do that in a second. And we also have space for the price. So I'll select my price. You'll notice that the pound sign and the price itself are separated because in a second, the number variable is going to take over and the pound sign is going to always be there. So I just split them up. So in this price text box, I'm going to go into my typography section, look for the variable button, apply variable, and I'll apply the price. So now that's changed to 173. Perfect. And now I want to insert the image, right? So you will might have noticed that our images are variants of a component called shoe image. Fine. I'll go into my assets panel and I'll pull out shoe image. This is way too big. So let's make it a bit smaller. My card is 175 in width. So let's make this one. I'm just going to constrain the proportions first and make it 175. Lovely. Bring it in bring it all the way to the side and to the top just to make sure that it's aligned probably want to pull it down actually right i want it to be a bit taller yeah there we go that looks nice doesn't it now this is good right but right now all of these are the same and i want them to use those different modes so let's see how we do that so if i select one of these instances if I scroll down to appearance in my design panel, you'll see that I have this apply variable mode button. If I select it, you'll see that I have the option to change it between the different shoes. So right now it's on shoe one, but if I change to shoe three, image doesn't change yet, but the price has changed, right? So we know that it's working, we're happy with that. Let's connect the image. I have a whole video called connect variable to variant, which goes into this in a lot more depth, but the main premise is, we know how variants work, right? I've got this component here. It's got four different variants. I have a drop down here and I select the different variants. So what we can do is use variable to control that. Now, if you look in my local variables, I have this image variable and it's a string variable. So it's just text and it has the names of all of my variants, right? So when I select my instance, instead of using this drop down, I can just use this button here to assign it to a variable and I'm assigning it to this one, shoe one, shoe one. Yeah. And it needs to be spelt exactly the same. Now, what that means is if I select it, I'm just selecting the shoe image right now. I can change the mode to something else, right? Change to shoe one, shoe four, shoe three. I'm going to put it back into, Ooh, why is shoe three? So you see what happened when I changed to shoe three, it didn't find it. And you see that strike through, it means that it's not able to find it. That's probably because something is misspelt. Ooh, you see this? There's a space after the, after the three. Okay. So I need to remove that. That's how like crucial it is that the spelling is exact. Okay. So I'll change this back to automatic 
I'll make sure that this one is on automatic as well. Great. Now, if I go into my instances, this one is shoe one, happy with that. This one in appearance, apply, and I'll change it to shoe two. Then I'll change this one to shoe three, and I'll change this one to shoe four. Wonderful, isn't it? I'll select this one actually, and instead of auto, I will change it to shoe one. So that is the first step of it, right? Super simple. And, and again, usually when you're creating mock-ups, you don't need to show 5,000 different things. It's enough to just show four because you're just showing proof of concept, right? You're not actually developing the whole thing. You don't have the entire database of the product. Now let's create our product page. So to start off the price, we need to connect that to price connect the name to the name, connect the color. By the way, I'm holding command down every time I'm doing this sort of deep selection instead of, you know, double clicking in. So I'll select the color, great. For the rating, same thing we did with the image, go into the assets panel and grab this little rating thing. Um, I'll just make sure that it's aligned. And then again, instead of selecting from the drop down, I will connect it to a variable ratings. Lovely. We need to bring an image in again. So I'll bring in the shoe image, align it to the top. Yeah, I think it's good the size that it is. And we want to make sure that I'm assigning it again to the variable. So now this whole page, if I select the whole frame and go into my collection, I can change it to whichever kind of shoe that I want, but I'm going to leave it on automatic. Really crucial that it is on automatic. Let's start prototyping this. Shift E to go into prototyping mode. And I will start off by doing the basic thing. I'll drag a noodle between the two and then it's interaction on click navigate to, but I need to add another interaction. And that interaction is set variable mode. You see the new fancy kind of prototyping panel. So in this one, it's going to navigate and then it's going to make sure that collection one is set to shoe one. Let's just duplicate this for the rest. I'm going to select my noodle, then click over here next to it. Command C, select the others and command V. Now in each one, I do need to change the mode. So this one needs to change to shoe two. This one will change to shoe three. And this one will change to shoe four. Let's just add a back button. So select this guy, shift and E, and just take us back. And that's it. Wow. So simple. So if I select my frame, shift and space. Now, when I click on this card, it takes me here. Shoe number one, perfect. Yellow, five stars, yellow Nike, blah, blah, blah. Let's go back. Now, what happens if I click on shoe two? It all changed, right? White, Nike, Daylight. Actually, these are four stars. This is how much they cost. Go back. Shoe four. <gasps> Amazing. Shoe three. Shoe one. Ah! So this makes our lives as designers so much easier because you've created this little e-com page, right? It has links to show you different shoes, but you've just created one product page. You haven't created multiple ones. If you do want to create multiple ones, again, using modes, so simple. I'll duplicate this one, holding down option, change it to shoe number two, duplicate it again, shoe number three, duplicate that again, shoe number four, yeah? So the way we prototyped it means that we didn't have to do all of this, but because we already have those variables set up, if someone wants to see all of them at once, you have that. But if when you're using the prototype, I would still actually just use one of these pages rather than connecting the noodles to different pages. It just makes life so much simpler. And that's that super quick remake. I feel like in this past year and a bit, we've all grown so much in our use of variables. So I wanted to just redo this video for our faster brains. If you want a more slow paced version of the video, you can go back and watch that one. Just remember that set variable mode just didn't exist then. So I was using a different method that might still work for you today. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe, leave a comment below. Let me know what else you want to see. See you at the next one.